Hello, thank you for joining me on I Am Maggie. And what we are doing here, we are doing a slow crawl through this beautiful book, Excuses Be Gone, by Dr. Wayne W. Dyer. And this book is very, very helpful to how to change lifelong self-defeating thinking habits. And so since many of us are on our journey to being our best and helping this world, and giving you know our acts of service and purpose. This book is full of wisdom and exercises to help you pivot on the point of excuses and move in the, the direction of your dreams. So on that note, hit like and subscribe now and leave your positive comments. I look forward to hearing from you. And so we're gonna pick up where we left off. We are currently in part one identifying and removing habitual thinking. We are in chapter two, your two minds. And if you will, I'd love to know how your exercises or affirmations went yesterday. I'd love to hear that. Okay, we're gonna start with the pick up where we left off. So the subtitle, your new outlook on creative consciousness. The everyday activity of your creative consciousness also proliferates excuses. You might think that you have no control over the thoughts that keep popping into your head, but consider this radical idea. Your thoughts are not located in your head. We're like Wi-Fi channels, source runs through and other things run through, competing. Thoughts is an energy system that isn't found anywhere in the physical world. The universe itself and everything in it is both mental and spiritual in nature. You create a field of energy with your thoughts. Like I've said this before, thoughts are structure and you can bump into them. <laughs> you create a field of energy with your thoughts and the field creates all of the particles or what Lao Tzu called the world of the 10,000 things. The world of the 10,000 things, I love that. This energy field is an important function of the body. Your conscious mind is always working and connecting this field from which everything is intended. Apply these two exercises. So we've got two more exercises. Quiet the mind by practicing daily meditation. As Sogyo Rinpoche wrote in the Tibetan Book of Living and Dying, the gift of learning is to meditate. The gift of learning to meditate is the greatest gift you can give yourself in this life. For it is only through meditation that you can understand the journey to discover your true nature. And so find the stability and confidence you will need to live and die well. That's a powerful statement. For, for only through this meditation that you can undertake the journey to discover your true nature so that finding the stability and confidence you will need to live and die well. Finding a way to give yourself that gift and access your conscious creative mind by eliminating unnecessary, unwanted, superfluous thoughts through meditation. So never God, I would call it, you know, going into the silence where you're, also, you're convening with God, but you're also being able to hear what's within. Exercise two. Use positive proclamations daily that are life enhancing and align you with the loving source of everything. Rather than allowing your thoughts to insist that something is wrong or missing, retrain your conscious creative mind with belief such as these. What I desire is already here. I just haven't connected to it yet. It can't be stopped because my thoughts are aligned with the mind and the intellect of God. So we're gonna hit that one up again. What I desire is already here. I just haven't connected to it yet. It can't be stopped because my thoughts are aligned with the mind or intellect of God. Very, very beautiful. Okay. The next subtitle is Your New Outlook and Habitual Consciousness. In this category, oh, I wanted to make this comment too. Um, 
We understand there's multiple life tracks and realities and dimensions and things, but also do not ignore the obvious 3D things. If you need to pay a bill, do so. You need to go to work, do so. If you need to do something to regain health, like take an antibiotic to kill an infection, whatever. I am a very common sense rubber meets the road. You cannot just be all up in fantasy and spiritual without being grounded and aware that you have to still keep walking through life, driving your car and being sensible. So just as a note, you know, you, we, we are going to work these things to get to transition to higher life tracks, but you also do have to still stay centered and dealing with life head on. Your new outlook on habitual consciousness. So in this category, you'll find excuses such as, here they come again, you can just feel it go bull. <laughs> I can't help the way I am because I had so many limiting ideas programmed into themselves. It's my subconscious, so then one can't reach in there and ex examine it, let alone deprogram themselves. If you believe that your mind is below your level of conscious awareness, you're created a ready excuse to use whenever it's difficult to change your thinking. So guys, we can become aware of what's in below the level of consciousness. We just have to like work, you know, spend that time in meditation, prayer, asking the questions that'll actually bring the answers. But if you're doing that, you're, you're creating another, a block immediately because you're going to say, well, I can't do it anyway. And then you won't. We can, we will, and we are. So, and if the self-limiting thoughts have been with you for years, it seems like a perfect excuse. So rename the subconscious mind, the habitual mind. So there's a little trick there, right? Sometimes you gotta trick your mind so that you can master it. So habit implies that you've made the same choices over time and your thoughts and behaviors are simply accustomed to a certain way of being. It also suggests that there's room to make your thoughts less automatic and more aligned with the realm of choice, which we are doing. Later, you will read about awareness as one of the keys to bringing these thoughts into your daily experience. But for now, practice the following as you start to eliminate excuses from your habitual mind. Okay, it's got a special name, habitual mind. Okay, one, begin noticing what you're thinking as a way to weaken your reliance on the excuse of your subconscious. Repeating these quotes can be helpful. So remember that little journal? Start to become, just jot down. You'll be surprised what your mind will blurt out sometimes, especially like when you're falling asleep or waking up, keep a little journal by and just, you'll be surprised. Meditating, poof, and you're like, wow, I didn't know that was in there. Okay, repeating these quotes can be helpful. Every extension of knowledge arises from making conscious the unconscious. Frederick Nietzsche. And the unconscious is dangerous only when our conscious attitude towards it becomes hopelessly false. From the Modern Man in Search of a Soul by Carl Jung. Two of the world's greatest teachers state that you can change previously unconscious thinking habits, the habitual mind, and by bringing them into your conscious mind. So that's into the light. <laughs> Relying upon the excuse of the subconscious mind is both false and dangerous. Why not create your version of those quotes as well? Try something like, I am perfectly capable of reaching into my own mind and changing anything about myself that is supported by my habitual thinking patterns, even if they seem to be automatic at this point in time. I can, I will, I am. Speak your truth in a way that assists you, your choice to rid yourself of those excuses. So if you know a teacher who does NLP, that's gonna be very, very helpful to talk to the mind in a way that the changes are quicker. But we'll get into that later. Google, Google and go on YouTube. There's a lot of good teachers. So two, make this a model for your thoughts. Do good things and don't do bad things. Do good things and don't do bad things. Okay, that's very simplistic, but it's, you know, 
or might be very helpful to someone. Bad thoughts prompt you to engage in self-limiting behaviors. Good thoughts, on the other hand, support your desire and capacity to live at high levels of joy, success, and health. So those good thoughts take you up to that life track. Here's some advice from ancient China attributed to a fictional character named Bird's Nest. Okay, here we go, story time. Long ago in China, there lived a monk who perched in a tree, certain tree, every day to meditate. No matter what the tree, no matter if the tree swayed in the fierce winds and rain, the monk settled himself comfortably, high up in the branches. Because of this, he was nicknamed Bird's Nest by the village folk nearby. Many of these villages passed beneath the monk while hunting or while gathering wood in the forest. And after a time, they grew used to him. Some began to stop and talk of their concerns to Bird Nest. They liked the things he had to say, and soon Bird Nest became known for this kind of thoughtful words. After some years, the monk wise reputation spread throughout the province. Visitors from distant cities hiked to the remote forest for advice. Even the governor of the province decided that he too would like to visit Bird Nest to discuss matters of importance. So one spring morning, the governor set out to find him. After traveling for several days, he at last located Bird Nest tree in the dense forest. The monk sat calmly, high in the topmost branches, enjoying the warmth and the birds. Song of spring. Looking up, the governor shouted, Bird's Nest, I am the governor of this province, and I have come a great distance to speak with you. I have a most important question. The governor waited for a reply, but heard only the pleasant sound of leaves stirring in the breeze. The governor continued, This is my question. Tell me, Bird's Nest, what is it that all the wise ones have taught? Can you tell me the most important thing the Buddha ever said? There was a long pause, just the soft rustling of leaves again. Finally, the monk called down from the tree. This is your ass, Governor. Don't do bad things. Always do good things. That's what all the Buddhas taught. But the Governor thought the answer far too simple to have walked two days for. Irritated and annoyed, he stammered, Don't do bad things. Always do good things. I knew that when I was three years old, monk. Looking down at the governor, Bird's Nest replied with a weary smile. Yes, the three-year-old knows it, but the eight-year-old still finds it very difficult to do. <laughs> so the three-year-old, so this is what I'm saying, the common sense. We know what a higher order value is. So our three-year-old knows it, but our eight-year-old, our 50-year-old, our six-year-old, our 30-year-old, or 19-year-old may not know, be able to uh, find it difficult, may find it difficult to do. So here we go, wrapping up this chapter. When it feels difficult to do good things, remember to seek the three-year-old within that bird nest referred to. Give yourself the gift of hearing thoughts from a time before conditioning was deeply embedded. And if you've ever encountered children, healthy children in healthy environments, they are full of love. They are full of joy. They are full of curiosity, creativity. They are genius. They're just this wonderful, pure energy to be around. So guys, gals, everyone, consult your inner three-year-old. All right, it was such a pleasure. I hope you enjoyed this reading. It was such a pleasure being with you. I really enjoyed the time. Now it's time to hit subscribe and like and leave your positive comments. Let me know what exercise you favor, what affirmation you love, or how the story affected you. Thank you. All right, and you know what's next. I'll see you tomorrow. Peace in. Peace.